back to order beginning with item number 14 commission general Reg general regulation 463 duties of person transporting vessel or conveyance lcb file number r093-16 fisheries division administrator john schoberg and wildlife staff specialist karen vargas workshop public comment allowed the commission will hold a workshop to consider amending chapter 488 of the nevada administrative code the change amends chapter 488 of nac by adding a new section that requires the owner operator or person in control of any vessel or conveyance that is launched on any body of water in this state to drain the water from the vessel or conveyance and any equipment on the vessel or conveyance and also requires the owner operator or person in control of a vessel or conveyance that has been taken out of any body of water in this state ensure that the drain plugs drain valves and any other devices used to control the draining of water remain open while transporting the vessel or conveyance on public roads in this state the proposed regulation also amends language in NAC 488.520 to accommodate the changes above and remove repetitive language. Mr. Schober. Uh, sound check for Reno. We can hear you Okay. Uh, for the record, John Schoberg, uh, Division Administrator, Fisheries, Nevada Department of Wildlife, uh, Chairman Wallace and Commissioners. Um, as Chairman Wallace just read the, the brief synopsis of this proposed regulation, uh, we've provided both a, a memo to the Commission that's part of the support material available for the meeting that, that further summarizes this as well as the actual language you received back from LCB. Um, real quickly, I wanted to cover a couple of points and then um, Karen has a brief presentation to go over both the need for this and, and the regulation. And then there's a couple of subsequent issues we'd like to discuss and then open it up, uh, please, to the commission for input and discussion. Um, I, I mentioned the two, the support documents. Um, I believe you also have a packet. The commissioners received a packet of letters of support we've received for this proposed regulation from um, State of Oregon, the province of Alberta, uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, um, the National Park Service, uh, Tahoe Regional Planning Agency, and also a copy of the um, resolution that was passed by the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies in Cody in July, which um, endorses and recommends the adaptation of this or similar legislation by all Western states. So we provided that as support material as well. Uh, what I'd like to do now is um, hand this over to Karen and she has a brief presentation and then we'll carry on. I think I'll take it down. I think you can hear me Reno with this way. Um, Hi, my name is Karen Vargas. I am um, a wildlife staff specialist with the Nevada Department of Wildlife, and I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator. So, it's court short. So, I'm just going to give a brief presentation, or try to make it brief, uh, regarding. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the AIS program. Um, <clears throat> this isn't a lot of slides, so you guys don't shouldn't need to move, but. It, this NAC 503.110 came up earlier today. Basically, it's illegal to import, transport, or possess things like quagga, zebra mussels, New Zealand mud snails. These are aquatic invasive species, but also has a lot of other species under that uh, NAC. There's also an NRS that makes it basically unlawful to move things around from one stream one body of water to another body of water, transport it around the state, and that includes uh, eggs and young of any of them. So those are just some of the basic laws that are already in place and regulations. So what we're looking at with quagga mussels, which most of you know we have at Lake Mead, and I'm not sure I have a pointer with this. Yeah, I do. Okay, Lake Mead all the way down here, all along Columbia River. There are, are 
Colorado River. I don't know where I ended up up there. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, so they are now at Lake Powell, and they infest this whole area down here. They're the ones in green. Uh, Lahontan Reservoir and Rye Patch Reservoir, which were up here, those initially um, tested positive for quagga mussels in 2011. Since that time, uh, we have had no other positive results. So basically, those waters are free of quagga mussels at this time. Top. Well, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. So anyway, without going in the to basically all up here is quagga mussel free. All through here they have zebra quagga mussels both. Uh, one area in California has zebra mussels, but basically we don't have zebra mussels except for the one place in California on the western states. Um, and the only place we have them in Nevada is Lake Mead and the lower Colorado River. They're completely quagga mussel free up here, and that's basically mostly due to watercraft inspection and decontamination stations set up across the states. Okay. Okay, this is a presentation of uh, just a having problems with this stuff okay this is showing boats leaving Lake Mead these are watercraft and it's just showing basically where they are going in the United States this was a real short study it was only about a week long and it was done a number of years ago I know from the data we collect at our watercraft stations at Lake Mead we have boats going to Florida we have them going to Virginia we have them going to British Columbia and we've even had one that went to Russia so we have boats leaving an infested quagga mussel water body and heading all across the United States. This is taking a minute to switch. I think the battery's going dead on this, you guys. There. Okay. So, to prevent the spread of quagga mussels and other aquatic invasives, we, uh, Endow, has set up stations, watercraft inspection and decontamination stations. We use, at Lake Mead, their year-round stations. We have four stations, including one at Lake Mojave. Uh, we have a rover down by the Laughlin area that visits, visits several sites down there. We have somebody over in the Ely area visiting Kirch Wildlife Management Area, Eagle Valley. And <clears throat> we have um, a station set up up at South Fork. Uh, this year was the first time we implemented a station in Elko along the mountain highway, hell, hell, trying to catch northbound boats before they hit Wild Horse or head into Idaho. And the reason for that is, of course, that wild horse drains into the Snake River Basin, which therefore drains into the Columbia River Basin. Uh, station at Rye Patch, three stations at uh, Lahontan Reservoir, one station at Topaz Reservoir. Lake Tahoe implements their own watercraft inspection station. We have some of these at, combined with uh, Nevada State Parks, of course, at Lahontan Rye Patch and South Fork Reservoir. So just kind of background of what we're doing. They're mostly seasonal stations, except for Lake Mead. I'm trying to get it to go again. <laughs> OK, here's just some uh, photographs. Uh, the one at the top is the Lahontan Reservoir Station this last summer. Uh, this one is over at Sparks Marina for a uh, jet ski competition. This is one of our rovers, what they're hauling around this decontamination unit. This is at Lake Mead, somebody under a boat cleaning uh, quagga mussels. These are the quagga mussels. It, this is obviously at Lake Mead, and we do get boats infested. This is the underside. and. The quagga mussels go into anything the water goes into, the quagga mussels are there. So inside of the boats and everything else. <clears throat> a 
Okay, this regulation, which you guys already talked about, and we're going to talk about it some more. I don't want to reread this to you, but basically we're trying to prevent the spread of not only quagga mussels, but other plant materials, seeds, pathogens that are born basically in the water and transporting them. Watercraft are the biggest source of transport of invasive species. And that's been shown over and over again. So I think with that, I don't want to reread all this to you. John already went through our letters of support for this. Um, basically, the, all the Western states are supporting this on this. So, um, John, where are you? Thank you, John. Uh, for the record, John Schoberg, uh, Fisheries Division Administrator. Uh, a couple of issues we wanted to cover real briefly. Um, when we first proposed this uh, regulation um, back in, first started putting the regulation together back in June, uh, we had gotten a call from the National Marine Manufacturers Association. There have been some issues they felt with certain states and the ways that they had worded their regulations that resulted in people trying to or being required to remove plugs from places that weren't supposed to be removable, particularly pontoon boats that have an air cavity in the pontoon. And that's not the kind of drain plug this is focused on. Um, when we went through the language of the regulation um, that was provided by, by LCB, it specifically says Ensure that all drain plugs, drain valves, and other devices, and I emphasize, used to control the draining of water from the vessel or conveyance. And we, we, we worked with the Marine Manufacturers Association. They felt that language adequately addressed the problem, along with our, you know, interpreting this once the regulation was approved so the boaters understood. Doug, can you leave that up? We were, we, I was walking through some, there, the last slide. Thank you. Um, and so we, we, we feel we've addressed that. The other issue that, that really just came up when we were taking a very close look at this earlier this week um, is that if you look at the language that was provided by LCB, it says, it says the owner, operator, or person in control of a vessel or conveyance that is launched on a body of water in the state shall. The problem, the concern we have with that is that this doesn't address boats that are being transported through the state before they're launched. Um, and so someone can bring a, a boat in into the state with the drain plugs in place with potentially contaminated water in the boat, and they don't have to do anything until they've launched that boat and then remove it from the water. And it was an oversight, I think, in the way that the LCB language was drafted. And we'd been looking at this for a while saying something's not quite right there, and we finally figured out that was the piece that was missing and we would recommend that we suggest to LCB that that lead in sentence say the owner operator or person in control of a vessel or conveyance that is launched on a body of water or transported on public roads in this state shall and add the phrase or transported in public roads to that initial sentence. This addresses the problem of incoming boats that potentially could be contaminated when they get here and by this authority we couldn't do anything until we proved that they launched that boat in the state. So that that addresses that problem. I, if anyone has recently driven from here into um, Wyoming, Idaho, or Montana, all three states have a sign when you cross the border that says all watercraft being transported must have drain plugs removed or something to that effect. We currently do not have that authority and this this regulation will address that to make it consistent with those other western states and provide an extra layer of insurance because it's not just vessels that are moving watercraft that are moving from a known infested body of water infestations can take place before and it may take us a while to detect them and this provides us that extra layer of insurance that when watercraft are being moved around the state that it absolutely minimizes the chance that something could get transported even if we haven't been able to detect it yet which frequently can happen. I think quagga mussels were probably in Lake Mead for three or four years before it got to a point where someone actually found them and they had increased to the quantity where they were detectable as adults. So our intent here is to provide that extra layer of security 
it's consistent with other Western states and it's consistent with the guidance we have from WAFA and from a number of other entities that, that work closely with invasive species control. And that was kind of all I had. I'd be happy to, uh, please let me turn this back to the commission. I'd be happy to entertain any questions or concerns. Thank you, John. Any questions from the commission? Hearing none, I'll take it out to public comment. Any public comment in Reno? Public comment in Elko? No comment in Elko. And public comment in Las Vegas. <coughs> Hearing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for further comments. <coughs> Commissioner Drew. So, John, you had mentioned entering or transported on public roads kind of at the beginning of Section 1 on page 1, if I'm reading that right. Yeah, let me, um, if I can find the exact... Yeah, it would, if you look at the LCB, the actual LCB draft, at the bottom of page one, it would add the language, <coughs> or transported on public roads. And that would be between water and the inn? That yes. Bottom line. Yes, and that language is the, on public roads is consistent with the language in subsection two that says on, pub, in, on public roads on the next page. Right, so since it's in two, do we not need to worry about adding anything in one? I, I don't think anything needs to be added in one at all. Um, because that's, that's specific to the requirements of drainage when you remove it from a body of water. And our concern was that as written, it didn't address in, it appeared to only require that after you've launched, then you couldn't move it on a public road without draining it. We want to make sure that you're required to drain it before you even get to the body of water that you're going to invest, potentially. Thank you. Further comments from the commission? Hearing none, I think uh, that would close the workshop on this item, uh, with the only change being the add addition of or transported on public roads in the first part of section one between water and in. That everyone's understanding? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Schrober. Moving on to agenda item number 15.